Now we're going to look at some ideal gas law problems where we also have to use molar mass to convert between grams and moles of a gas. Take this problem for instance. Calculate the volume that 12.5 grams of CO2 gas will occupy at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.0 atm. I've gone ahead and filled in a number of the variables that we're going to be using. As you, as you can see here, volume is what we're going to be solving for. When we do this, the first thing that I always check is to make sure that the units of the variables match the units on R. Okay, so we have ATM, ATM, that's great. Temperature, as you know, needs to be in Kelvin to work with gases. So I've gone ahead and already done that because I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with how we add 273 to the degrees Celsius to get Kelvin. So I'm going to change 40 degrees Celsius here to 313 Kelvin. The next thing that we have to do though is look here at the amount of gas we have, N. Right now it's reported in grams, 12.5 grams. But to use it in the ideal gas law, it needs to be in moles. So this means that we're going to have to use the molar mass of CO2 to convert from grams of CO2 into moles of CO2. So the first thing we have to do is determine the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Well, it has one carbon and two oxygens. So we take the mass of carbon plus two times the mass of oxygen, add these together, and it gives us 44.0 grams for each mole. All right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take 12.5 grams of CO2 times, I want to cancel out grams, so I'm going to flip this fraction. One mole divided by 44.0 grams. And the math that I'm going to do is 12.5 times 1 divided by 44. I'm going to round that to three significant figures. One mole. This is an exact counting number. So we don't worry about significant figures for this. Three here, three here. So I'm going to round this to three significant figures and I'm going to get 0 0.284 moles of CO2. So we can cancel out grams and show that we've changed this into 0 0.284 moles. Now, everything that I have in terms of my variables matches with a value that I have on R. So I'm going to take PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law, and calculate and uh, rearrange this to get V by itself. So all I have to do is divide both sides by P, then the P's cancel out, and I get V equals NRT divided by P. So I've gone ahead and plugged most of these values into the equation. I have N, I have T, and I have P as before I leave R until the end, and here it is. Now let's go and cancel the units. ATMs here, ATMs up here, moles here, moles here, Kelvin there, Kelvin there, which leaves me with liters, which makes sense since I'm solving for volume. Now the math I'm going to do, I'm going to do this times this times this all together, then divided by 1.20 ATM. And I'm going to get 6.08169. How many significant figures do I round it to? I round it to three. So I keep the six, I keep the zero, and I keep the eight. And I look whether I round it up or down. I keep it the same. So I do, my final answer is going to be 6.08. What are my units? The units are what I was left with after canceling 6.08 liters. And that's my final answer for this. OK, here's another problem. A certain gas has a molar mass of 28.0 grams per mole. How many grams of this gas would fit in a 3.00 liter container at 182 kPa and 47.2 degrees Celsius? I filled in my variables here, n, how many grams of this gas, how much gas, that's what we're solving for. 
As before, I'm going to look through at these variables and make sure that they match the units on R. Celsius is always a problem when we're dealing with gases. I think as you know by now, we want to take any Celsius temperature with gases and add 273 to that to get Kelvin. Here I've had to also round using my addition rules for significant figures, so I get 320 Kelvin is going to be the new temperature that I'm going to use. So now Kelvin's match. I have liters here, but check this out. I have kilopascals and I have ATM. So my pressure units don't match. There are two things I could do. One of these things that I could do is I could use a new R. I said earlier that you want that you can use a different R so that your pressure units match. So I could use 8.31 which has KPA instead of ATM. That would be totally fine if you want to do that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to stick with the R that I'm using right now, and instead I'm going to convert KPA into ATM so that the units match. One ATM is equal to 101.3 KPA, so I can do this math. KPA up here, KPA down there. They cancel out, and I'm going to get rounded to three significant figures, 1.80 ATM. So this expressed in atmospheres is 1.80. So now everything that I have matches the units on R, and I'm ready to go about solving this. So PV equals nRT. I'm solving for N. Divide both sides by RT. Now those guys cancel out. I get PV divided by RT equals N, or if you want to flip it, I can have N equals PV divided by RT. So here is what I get when I plug these values in. I have pressure, and I have volume, I have temperature, and I've left R till the end. Because R is on the bottom, I take the value that I have here and I flip it. So I have Kelvin moles and then the number liters ATM. Okay? Cancel the units and I'm left with moles. And when I do out this math, this times this divided by this times this, final answer that I get rounded to three significant figures is 0. 206, and there's my units, moles. But we're not done with a problem yet, because if you see here, we're solving for grams, not for moles. So how do we go from moles to grams? We use molar mass. We know that this gas has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole. So what I can do is I can take my moles and multiply this number by 28.0 grams divided by one mole. Moles up here, moles down here, so they cancel out. And the final answer that I'm going to get, rounded again to three significant figures, one mole doesn't count because it's a counting number, is going to give me 5.77 grams. And that is how we solve ideal gas law problems using molar mass for converting grams and moles.